Sony gonna do what Sony gonna do. And man, am I sick of it. Hi everybody, Anthony here from Awesome Anthony Productions. It's almost the end of Spooktober! And I am not talking about a horror movie today. Instead, I'm gonna talk about yet another entry into Sony's ill-advised Spider-Man universe that doesn't even have the webhead in it, the supposed finale in the trilogy starring Tom Hardy, Venom, The Last Dance. But before we get started, you know exactly what to do. At the end of the video, if you think I've earned it, please leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss any of my new reviews. Now let's get into it. Following up on the post credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home, Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock and Venom are transported out of the MCU back into the Sony-verse, where they learn that they're now wanted fugitives blamed for the murders committed by Carnage in the last film. So not only are they being pursued by the military and a ruthless general, confusingly played by Choatel Ejiofor, Mordo and the Doctor Strange movies, but also from the minions of the ruler of the symbiote homeworld, Null, voiced by the director of Venom 2, Andy Serkis. On the run from both of their worlds, Eddie and Venom will encounter new characters, including a family of hippies led by the father Martin, also confusingly played by Risa Fons, who played Dr. Connors in The Amazing Spider-Man and No Way Home, and Life Foundation scientist Dr. Payne, played by Juno Temple, and Sadie Christmas, played by Clark Bacco, and some old friends like Peggy Lou's Mrs. Chen. But things will catch up to them eventually, forcing Eddie and Venom to make a decision that will change the course of their lives forever. Now, the first two Venom films, they were chaotic, they were campy, and they were underwritten. But there was a weird charm they had in the wacky, offbeat, almost kind of bickering gay couple dynamic that they had between Eddie and Venom. And the duo's back at it here having fun, with trailer moments like fighting a bunch of dogfighters in Mexico, the Venom horse, and the dancing scene in Las Vegas with Mrs. Chen. But to get to those moments, we have to wade through a ton of exposition, with characters explaining every little bit of this convoluted plot and bringing the pacing to a screeching halt. And it took up so much of the runtime of this relatively short movie, like it's only an hour and a half. After what felt like the 10th scene in a row of things being explained to the audience, I felt like I was going insane. Noel's intro scene alone is one of the clunkiest exposition dumps I've ever seen in my life. Moving on, the Eddie and Venom scenes that worked so well in the first two movies, pretty much the only parts that worked in those first two movies, are here as well, but the magic just doesn't feel as strong anymore. Tom Hardy's energy is very low-key. He just seems exhausted, like he's tired of fighting for laughs. There are moments at work, like the scenes that I mentioned before, and some good banter here and there, but none of it just feels fresh anymore, and the added new characters and side plots don't help much either. Which brings me back to the supporting cast. They're, well there, swapping out the great Michelle Williams or Woody Harrelson for characters that we couldn't give a shit less about. Juno Temple and Clark Bacco, their characters are introduced and then barely in the film at all until they suddenly become pivotal in the last act. Risa Fons Martin just feels like a one-note comic relief character in a movie that already has a bunch of jokey characters to begin with, and Chiwetel Ejiofor's general feels pretty one-note as well. He gives a solid performance because he does in everything, but here with his generic big bad military general role, it just feels like wasted potential. And the plot? Borderline nonsensical. Noel is hyped up as this terrifying force to be reckoned with, but outside of the introduction and a credit scene, he has no real presence in this movie aside from characters name dropping him and telling us how terrifying he is. And the reason for Eddie and Venom to be on the run from him and his minions is contrived at best and actually pretty stupid at the worst. Especially with how Venom acts knowing why they're on the run. Part of the story and how Noel's minion keeps finding them is that Venom can't fully transform into himself, but the sheer amount of stupidity that he he shows to just keep changing and allowing them to be caught is very frustrating. It also cleverly cuts down on the CGI budget, which was very, very noticeable with Tom Hardy being on the screen much, much more than he was in the last two movies. Plus, whenever there was a bunch of CGI on screen, it just felt very mediocre, which is par for the course with superhero movies nowadays. Then they try to wrap this up with an emotional finale that's a fitting end to Eddie and Venom's journey, and honestly, I thought that the climax does pull off a few emotional beats that landed pretty well. But the closing scenes that are supposed to hit you hard in the feels, they end up more awkward than heartfelt, especially in Eddie Venom montage that was set to a song that I just could not believe. I sat there thinking, well, that's a choice. And to add salt to the wound, the credits drag on for 16 minutes after the mid credit scene to get to an after credit scene that really doesn't even matter all that much. Okay, look, it sounds like I completely hated this, and that's not true. There are fun moments here and there between Eddie and Venom, some lively action scenes, and a few emotional beats that manage to work. 
considering this is the supposed final movie in this trilogy. But to get to all of that, you have to suffer through way too much stilted exposition, too much runtime spent away from the main characters without the draw of these films to focus on new, random, afterthought side characters, so-so CGI, and what ultimately feels like a rushed, underwritten ending to this trilogy that was never really my favorite to begin with. Fingers crossed that Marvel gets Venom right whenever they decide to introduce the black suit into the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. And that's my review of Venom The Last Dance. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, you know exactly what to do. I said it earlier. Please leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss any of my new reviews. While you're at it, you can scroll down in the description below, find the links to my socials, leave a comment, let me know if you saw this movie and what you thought. And if you want more of my content, you can click or tap on these cards right here. I'll take you my review of Smile 2 or just over to my channel where you can check out the rest of my reviews and my shorts. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you tomorrow for a special Halloween video to end off Spooktober!